When you decide it's time to make some new YouTube video art about your tie-dye adventures, you assess the situation in your studio. Who made this mess? Surely it wasn't you, but you'll clean it up anyway. Think about what you're gonna do, pretend to make an intro, and then clean up the surfaces. Put on your gloves, and then lay out the fleece. You decide what you're gonna do, it's gonna be the same thing you always do, because once you figured that out, you're not gonna deviate. It took so long to figure out a process that works well that you just stick to what works, until you don't, and then you torture yourself with rounds and rounds of disappointment. But that's what keeps you hooked on tie-dye, because you never know how it's gonna turn out. Every third time, it's awesome. Every tenth time, it's mind-blowing. The rest of the times are disappointing, and they make you work even harder to get back to the high of the great times. Anyway, you put on your protective gear because you care about your lungs, and then you decide on which rainbow colors you're gonna use this time. You put bright green in between daffodil and sky blue, then some lavender and Chinese red, peach and daffodil. This seems to be a winning combination. You decide to do another one, scoot everything down, put down some more fleece. Put those gloves back on, grab another shirt. More scrunching, tall, deep scrunches. Stick it in a basket. By the way, I don't know where you can get these baskets. They were from Meyer, and they're, they were really expensive. I haven't been able to find a listing online for them, but the measurements are 14 inches by 10 inches by s seven inches deep. So yeah, if you find those measurements, it seems to be a good amount of space for this purpose. I think it works best if you have some fleece around the shirt. If the shirt itself is so big, like a sweatshirt, it's so big that it's touching the edge of the basket, then it's hard to get proper flow around the edges of the shirt. So I like having extra fleece around the item so that it can be fully drowned in dye and ice. So anyway, back to the story here. Then you put on the rest of your rainbow colors. We're trying out fancy colors to see which ones will be the most magical. Take a picture so you remember what you do. All right, when I started this tie-dye experiment, I was trying to figure out the nuances of which collection of colors I liked for a rainbow. And I think it doesn't really matter. What I think does matter is the difference between these two. I did one thing pretty, like, different with this one, and it really seems to matter. And the difference with this one is how fast the ice melted. So here, I had set up a space heater in front of this container. This one was behind this one, but it wasn't getting direct heat, so it took a lot longer for this batch of ice to melt. But this one melted pretty fast. I would say, like, the bulk of the ice in the dye went through in an hour. And I think that was way too fast because these peak areas here are quite washed out. There's not a lot of detail. It's still a cool shirt, but it's not my preference. So these two took a lot longer to melt. And this one, let me see here. This one took the longest to melt. It had no space heater on near it. So it probably took 12 hours to fully melt. So there's a lot of detail in this and everything looks about the same amount of saturated. There's no part here that looks washed out. So love this one. This one's good too. I just don't love that this has a big white spot there. But other than that, like this might have turned out perfectly. And the, like, so the conditions for this were fine. Overall, I love the colors peach and daffodil. So you can see that right here, peach, daffodil. They make a really nice pink color right here, peach and daffodil, love that. And it's over here too. I think that looks really nice. This blue is robin's egg blue and it was sitting right next to daffodil to make the green areas. It kind of looks like wasabi when you do that, I think. So daffodil and turquoise or robin's egg blue, they're not gonna make like the cleanest green, but it still looks fine. And then this purple is lavender and Chinese red. So that probably would have looked just fine with a slower melt. This one has peach daffodil, bright green, lavender, Chinese red, and sky blue. 
I do like the sky blue, the bright green, lavender. I think this is a solid color choice for that one. And then over here we have, again, peach, daffodil, robin's egg blue, lavender, Chinese red is there. I think it was down here too, but it kind of missed the shirt. And also something I did different with this one is I put the stripes of color on and then I went back and in the middle of the shirt to add a little more detail, I put kingfisher blue because it's a little darker than these other colors. So it added some nice detail, it's like lines in there. I really like that strategy of putting down all of your medium darkness colors and then going back with a tiny amount of something dark just to add in some lines and contrast. It's a great strategy. So that's what I learned from this is use slower melting ice and record your colors so that you can know what you prefer. Uh, 